What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 359 of the Smart Out Moments Smack Talk Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango, and joining me, as always, is Robert D. Felice. Hello, Tony. How are you on this fine, now Tuesday, crack of day? I've got the Z's. I'm tired. Sleepy. Exhausted. Most of it from Monday Night Raw, because it was a fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's was... not good. No, we are not going to break down Monday Night Raw, because if we did that, this would be a three-hour podcast, and we would just be like, and another thing, let's talk for 20 minutes about how stupid it is, that, and then fill in the blank. But we are going to do the hot tags of the week, and if you don't know what the hot tags are, they are a generalized breakdown of the current events and the rumors and the news and the gossip and the scuttlebutt and everything else that happens in the past couple of days in the world of professional wrestling that we feel is noteworthy enough to talk about that isn't going to be wrapped up into something else. Like, obviously, we're not going to be like, all right, well, noteworthy thing happened. Miko Satamura uh, moved on in the tournament for the Mayon Classic. It's like, yeah, that was filmed like three months ago. So, you know, uh, although if you're watching the Mae Young Classic, it's one of the best things that they have going on right now on WWE television. It's actually kind of fun. I recommend it. But no, we're going to talk about Mix Match Challenge. We're going to talk about Total Divas. We're going to talk about Crown Jewel. We're actually going to talk a little bit about Bound for Glory, or at least a certain aspect of it, and a couple other little things here and there. So let's just dive right into this with one of the most inconsequential ones that we got going on here. Kevin Owens is, well, let's just say, put it this way. Kevin Owens being injured is not inconsequential, but his role in the Mixed Match Challenge is. Owens is going to be spending at least the rest of the year sitting on the sidelines. He is going under some kind of knee surgery. And as far as I know, his timetable of returning is maybe sometime around WrestleMania or so. Maybe even past that. I don't know. They said it's four to eight months. So he could miss WrestleMania. He could be. And you know what? In the grand scheme of things, even though I obviously don't want Kevin Owens to miss WrestleMania, I can't imagine that they would put him in any kind of a big enough spot anyway. So if push comes to shove even though I'm probably going to WrestleMania and I would like to see Kevin Owens perform, wouldn't be the worst thing in the world uh, for him to, you know, take a little bit more time off. And he's not going to be competing anymore in the Mixed Match Challenge because of this, so that means that for the third, or is it the fourth time for the season, we're getting a replacement. We had um, uh, Alexa Bliss sure. was replaced by Mickey James. Or no, she was replaced by... Ember Moon. Ember Moon, that's what it was. Sasha Banks was replaced by Mickey James. Correct. And now we're getting Bobby Roode replacing Kevin Owens. This um, this uh show sucks. <laughs> like I the what the weird thing is about Mix Mixed Match Challenge is I could not give the slightest shit about it. But I'll admit on a week-to-week -week basis, I have more fun watching that half an hour than I do watching some other things. Like, tomorrow night's Mixed Match Challenge is probably going to be more entertaining than what the three hours of Raw tonight ended up amounting to. Yeah, I think sometimes inconsequential is good. You know, when it's lighthearted like this. It just so happens that this one came out of nowhere and it seems to have been completely snake-bitten. And... You know, as far as Kevin Owens being out for 48 months, hey, if he can come back with Sami Zayn and they can get some steam underneath them, I think it's great. Distance makes the heart grow fonder, you know? They might not get some steam underneath them, but maybe some steam. Mm. Very nice. I kind of want to make some Ricky the Dragon steam boat joke, but I can't think of one. So. <laughs> Steened hams. Yeah. <laughs> I hate team pause in particular. Uh, I've mentioned before Natalia doing the whole like, I've got a cat. Isn't that interesting? That thing is stupid. And Bobby Roode is like, now this is his second bad tag team that he's in. Cause he's got that whole stupid thing with Chad Gable. And that is awful. That is just horrendous. I like Gable and I like Roode. But good lord, if your idea for what to use Bobby Roode is to say, well, we haven't done anything with him in a while, let's just put Chad Gable with him and hope that Chad Gable impresses him by saying glorious, and then you go, was that good, Bobby? And he's like, yeah, yeah, champ, let's go get some hot dogs. You know, like, it's just like, 
Oh, Jesus, God. it's terrible. So now it's going to be the same thing, kind of, when it comes to Natalia. It'll be like, oh, did you see that my cat is Team Pause and whatever? And uh, Bobby Roode will be like, Pause is glorious. And then it's like, oh, just cut a couple no. weeks short and just no, don't use any of these teams. Yeah. I like Natalia. I do. I think that the cat thing can be funny. Like, I thought when they tried to make it, where Tyson was Natty's husband, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I can't be here right now. I gotta go feed the cats. And they were doing the whole Natty's husband thing. I like that. And then they tried to do the whole, you know, she's a, she's a cat, and she's got the whole whip thing going. You know, whatever. Like, that at least seemed like they were doing something fun with it. But this whole, like you said, hey, Bobby, did you see my cat? Yeah, it's glorious. It's like, yeah, I I don't know. I don't I don't really want to see any of these teams. You know, like the first season was good. You had um like Rusev and Lana, and you had who who was teaming with Charlotte? It was another. It was, it Bobby. was Bobby Roode, right? Yeah. yeah, like they had the robe thing going on. I thought that was funny. Now you got AJ Styles, who's your WWE champion, by the way, We're randomly breakdancing, and you got this weird. R Truth Carmella team. I, 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 well, I, like, I like the R Truth Carmella team. Fabulous Truth. I like them. But what I don't like is every single week when it's like, next week we're going to be having Phenomenal Flair against somebody. And then it's like, all right, like right, let's go to Phenomenal Flair. Hey, we're Phenomenal Flair. We're going to beat so-and-so. Woo! Hey, you didn't woo all that well. Ha 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 ha. And then it's like, and also Team Asuka. Oh, we're Team Asuka and we're going to win because we're awesome. It's like, did you film like 400 of these and then you just do the same thing every single goddamn time? No, they're like, hey, uh, you guys are together. Miz, take out your phone. Cut a promo real quick. Like, that's something that they started with this mix Band Challenge that I hate. These cell phone promos. They're awful. They're just the fucking worst. And they don't even really do that in a location where it would be like, hey, I'm walking around and I'm just going to like hold it. It's like, you're backstage. Why isn't there a cameraman? Yeah, but there's a cameraman on you in every uncompromising position backstage, but not when you need one. Mm -hmm. Suddenly there's a cameraman that pops up before things happen, like before people get attacked backstage. Yet when it's time for you to say... This is what I'm going to be doing for the next episode of Mix Match Challenge. No fucking cameraman can be found. It's just like, bring out your cell phone. Ah, I hate it. I hate a lot of That's things with stupid. this Mix Match Challenge thing. And season two is going to be ending at TLC, which means it's going to continue at least until like all the way into December. And it's not going to matter. It's not for anything. It's, it's not going to, you know, serve a purpose. And then it's going to eat up some time on the uh, the TLC card. You know, maybe that should end at evolution. Oh no, wait, that would be that would be not good. Maybe it should just end. <laughs> <laughs> the only benefit to this is they figured out a little bit when it comes to two oh five live doing a little bit better on Wednesdays. Downside of that though, of course, two oh five live is pre taped and we're going to answer a little bit more on that when it gets to the mailbag. Because remember, everybody, the mailbag is this week. We're going to be recording that Wednesday afternoon. So send in those questions as soon as you possibly can if you want to make sure that you get them in on time. Um, we were just talking a minute ago about Asuka and the whole stupid video phone kind of video phone. Wow, am I really old? All those video phones they've got, you know. Uh, the newfangled video phones. On their, their cellular devices. Uh the rumor going around right now and this I don't even know if this is a rumor it seems like it's a guarantee is that she isn't getting a push because she can't speak English well enough and if that's the case I can see the argument for and I can also see the argument against let me put it this way you're a company that is predominantly English speaking like you you're based out of America America doesn't have an official language but if it did it would be English because that's just how it works and for the majority of the audience, they really connect a lot more with people when they're able to cut promos. But really, if you look at 
whether or not this is like a good or a bad thing and stuff like that, Asuka got ruined by them not uh, let me collect my train of thoughts here. Asuka's problem isn't that she can't speak English that well. Asuka's problem is that they completely abandoned her. They had her lose at WrestleMania and then she dropped off the face of the earth after losing a bunch of other times. It just suddenly did the whole thing that they do with undefeated streaks. You lost once now you're vulnerable. Now you can lose over and over and over again. And I don't know if it's a philosophy in WWE where it's like, well, she won so many matches. Her winning record is still amazing. People will ignore it. Well, people don't ignore it when you make them think that the person's not good anymore. And if you don't put that person on television, then they are not just a loser. They're also an inconsequential loser. Because look at the difference between somebody like Kevin Owens, a guy who doesn't win a lot of the big, big feud type things, but he still matters because he was on television a lot versus somebody like Rhino. <laughs> well, <laughs> way to throw Rhino under the bus there, Tony, but uh, yeah. Rhino could have been a bigger deal. I mean, I've never been the biggest fan of him, but he had like a lineage behind him and stuff. And at a certain time when he would come back and it would be like, oh, it's Rhino. Like he, he could have won a mid card belt, but they didn't want him to. So they had him lose and lose and lose and lose. And for the past like two years, he's been wrestling on main event. So it's like, yeah, of course, Rhino doesn't matter right now. And the less of a push that Asuka gets, the more inconsequential she uh, seems. And I'm getting really suspicious about what's going on with Shinsuke Nakamura. I think it's the same thing. Well, see, but the one thing Shinsuke has that no other Japanese star that they've ever had has is he can cut a promo. He can actually make sense in English. It might not be great, but he makes sense. And I... All right, you said no evolution talk, but fuck it. Why is Asuka in the fucking nobody cares battle royal? Well, we will talk about this when it comes to the prediction <laughs> stuff, but, but I'm what? working under the assumption that maybe she wins it, and that's where we get the whole title shot against Becky Lynch. So, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're going to tell me that we have this ingenious idea to have Asuka win a battle royal? Never seen that before. <laughs> win a battle royal to get a title <laughs> shot. It's almost as if we went back a couple of months, which is almost as if WWE has been doing that a lot lately where they go. Remember that thing that we did? Let's do that. That's been the theme of 2018 has been. Yeah, I don't really want to do a whole lot of work. Can we just do the thing we did before and call it a day? The, like, this is... let's do Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. And then after we do that, the next pay-per-view, let's do Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. And then a couple of pay-per-views down the line, let's do Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. In the meantime, we'll do Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. And then we'll start this whole thing with the shield against the dogs of war and do that. We fucking, we had two matches with those two groups of people on tonight's episode before we had the same six man tag team match that we had gotten Two previous times in the past two weeks. Like, you know, uh, I mean, this has nothing to do with Oscar, but it's like, God damn it. Like, you yeah, know, but, but back on Oscar, um, she worked so well in NXT and I don't want to be one of those guys that's like, well, she worked better in NXT and it'll be better when Vince dies and Triple H is at the helm. But guess what? In this case, she worked better in NXT they treated her perfectly, and this will be a lot better when we don't have the Vince, or let's just not even call it Vince. Let's call it the old guard mentality around Asuka. Because she couldn't, she can't really speak English, but you know what she can say? Nobody's ready for Asuka, and that worked. And all of that just went out the fucking window at WrestleMania when she said, Charlotte was ready for Asuka. Yay! It's like, are you fucking kidding me, man? I I don't... And what happened to managers? They just put two managers to people on Monday Night Raw, proving that they, they remember that that's a thing. Because the Authors of Pain can't cut promos, so they gave them Drew, uh, Drew McIntyre, I was going to say, Drake Maverick, 
And Bobby Lashley can't cut a promo, so they gave him Leo Rush, which admittedly is still kind of suspect because Leo Rush apparently can only cut a promo if it's just ah, 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 that kind of fucking weird laugh thing that he's got going on. But that proves that they understand the idea that if somebody can't talk that well, give them a mouthpiece that can. And Asuka could use a mouthpiece. Like, they seem to be very against the idea of the women having mouthpieces. Yeah, because they probably feel like, well, you'd have to stick them with a woman. And who do you put? Do you make Lana a manager again? No. Do you put Zelina Vega with Asuka? Maybe not. You know, like... And, like, what's so bad with having... Like, who's somebody who can cut a promo that's not doing really anything right now? Off the top of my head. I'm not looking at the roster list, but I'll try to bring that up. Like, uh... I would say, like, Drew Gulak, but Drew Gulak's better than that. Um, but that's a good answer. Um, let's see here. Maybe somebody from, like, the NXT side of things. Let's just, you know, uh, let's see. we got the Undisputed Era. No, we've got, like, Street Profits. No, they're already doing their kind of thing. If he wasn't being a GM right now, William Regal would be a hell of a mouthpiece for Asuka. Or for anybody, really. But we've got, okay. you know, former people that could be brought back. And we've got, like, you're not going to put, obviously, like, give a mic to Sin Cara and be like, be a manager now. Like, he's not somebody that can kind of fill that void. But there are people that can do it. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, like, now because it's going to take forever. But, like... You can do that with Asuka, and you can do that for Shinsuke Nakamura if you wanted to or whatever. And if they don't feel like they can do that, then doesn't that kind of also give them sort of a bad perspective when it comes to, like, Io Shirai and Kairi Sane? Like, well, you're not going to go anywhere because you can't speak perfect English. You better hope that you accomplish a lot in NXT because once you come to the main roster, you're fucked. But it just it shouldn't be that way. I don't know. How to better articulate this? Asuka should have been a major threat for Ronda Rousey. Asuka should have been, you know, this dominant force. And she just faded away. It's just, it's so lame. It is. And it's a shame because this is one of those things where <clears throat> if Asuka spoke English because she was from, you know, like Massachusetts or something like that, instead of being from Japan, she probably would be somebody that they wouldn't have paid any attention to. It's probably the idea that she was from Japan that made her kind of like, oh, we've got like, you know, now we've got like a Japanese star. And then for her to be a Japanese star and that they don't want to push because she's Japanese and doesn't speak proper English, like, you know, anybody who grew up here and it's their first language kind of makes you wonder do they really actually want anybody from any of these countries or do they just want to look like they have these people right and i know wwe's under a lot of fire for a lot of things right now but gail kim did say this during medusa's podcast during all in weekend she said yes they have oscar but it seems like it's mostly because they're a public company and they have, you know, certain criteria to meet. She didn't say it exactly like that. It's been over a month. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. And it seems like it's true, you know? They're just getting all of these people because, you know, they have these quotas to fill. And you have to appear like a global company, which is why I said... When Triple H does things, I believe it. I I feel like it's genuine when he does something like NXT UK, and he wants to expand. When Vince has a Japanese star, he's like, yeah, but wouldn't it be funny if we put him in an American flag and we said this is knock America? You know, like, come on. Look at the revolving door of people from the performance center that they hire. They hire, like six people at a time from a certain area it's kind of like well we did a whole tryout in like jamaica and we're gonna hire six jamaican people and then a couple months later three of them are released and then two years later the other three are 
and then you're just kind of like so bin wang yeah this dude pops up in the andre the giant memorial battle royal two years ago i think is what it was he hasn't even wrestled on a single episode of nxt that i, I think, think they think released of. him no i think he's still there but there have been uh, like plenty of other people that have been released in the meantime they just they hire like five people from china they don't do anything with them they hire a couple people from india they don't do anything with them didn't they announce a bunch of people from Saudi Arabia that they had signed before? I don't remember yeah, even the hearing one their that names cut a after really that. Good promo. He actually works for NXT now. Yeah, they just kind of like go around and spin a globe and then point their finger at something, and they're like, "All right, the next people that we're going to sign from are from," and then it's like, "Do do 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 Belgium." Let's get a bunch of Belgian stars, and then like somebody like an Oscar. It's kind of like. All right, yeah, she can't speak English as well as some of the other people do. She's from goddamn Japan. Is she still as good as she is in the ring? Is she still the same character that was interesting before? Just have her go out and fucking wrestle. It's a wrestling show. You can get by on wrestling if you really want to. And if you can't figure out ways to figure out a feud for her without her cutting promos and stuff, you're not trying hard enough. You know? Which and is something that the roster really is not doing right now. It's the the writers are not trying hard enough. They don't want to. Anyway, rant about that. We should. It's not even like hot tags lately. It's been just like the rant tags of just like another thing that pisses me off. <laughs> you know what really grinds my gears? This fucking evolution card. You know. Like, <laughs> Oh, so we, we're we're gonna run down that next week so much. Um, but hey, if we're in the spirit of talking about the women's revolution and stuff, we have to talk about the women's revolution and go back in time even further to the divas' revolution. Which means let's talk about how Nikki Bella said that she wanted to change the name of Total Divas, and basically the thing that she had said, which does of course make sense, is. We were thinking about changing the name, but you can't really just change the name of a TV show like that. Totally get it. Totally understand. Total Divas was called Total Divas when they were still called the Divas Division. And if they were to change it to something else, it's like, well, then you have to change all the marketing things to go along with that. Then you have to kind of re-educate people when their DVR changes over. They have to plug in the different thing. You know, like there's there's negatives when it comes to that and stuff. However, question number one, what would you change it to? Uh, did she not give any examples? I don't think so. I'd be really curious to see what those pitches were, unless it was one of those things where it's like, I think that the diva's name is just not like good anymore. Can we change it? And then somebody else is like, no. And it's like, uh, because that could have been as simple as what it was. Well, then. They- Uh, you can't call it something like sexy superstars because then that's, you know, provocative and presumptuous. I don't know. I wouldn't even know what to change it to. Honestly, the fact that Total Divas has been on the air now for five years is scary to me. The scariest part is that that being out there for that long and being such like a focal point for them means that that kind of justifies it in their minds. They're like, Total Divas is great. People love to hear this shit, you know, like they really really scary is if you watch every season, you can see the fucking revolving door of women like the show started out as Jojo, Eva Marie, uh, the Funkadactyls and the Bella Twins. Wasn't there anybody else in there? Wasn't there, um... And maybe Wait. Natty. Yeah, and Natty. Natty was there from the beginning. And that's it. And in the and meantime, like... they've had Naya, they've had Alexa, Lana, Carmella, Paige. Uh, Rosa. Yeah, Rosa was part of that for a little bit. Alicia Obviously. Fox. Yeah, fuck, I forgot about Alicia. They, I mean, it's been a revolving cast with the exception of the Bellas. And Natty. Because even um, Naomi skipped the season. Four Horsewomen haven't been a part of it, right? Because they're, they don't want to be. <laughs> they, they, they know better than that. 
who else hasn't been a part of it? Dana Brooke hasn't, but that's just because nobody cares in WWE about Dana Brooke. Ember Moon hasn't yet. None of like the newer ones from like NXT have. Mandy Rose was a part of it. Yeah. Weird, man. Odd that they didn't do that with uh, Sonya Deville. Yeah, and maybe they will. You know, get that. And, well, I'm going to say something here, and it'll come off screwed up, but I don't mean it like this. It's just that they're a marketing company, and you could get that LGBT market with Sonya Deville. Mm-hmm. Maybe the reason why they don't want to do that is because her girlfriend is Zara Schreiber. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, we don't want the Nazi in here. <laughs> you know, like that kind of thing. Well, poor her. Talk about a career that went downhill fast, huh? Hmm. Well, that's what happens. Uh, let's, uh, let's pivot a little bit here. Let's go talking about Bound for Glory. I didn't watch it because it's TNA. And, well, it's not technically TNA anymore. But it's TNA means a lot just by saying that. And that's all I need to say about that. But. Apparently, Austin Aries has left Impact. Now, you've watched Bound for Glory, so fill me in here. What I'm getting from little reports and splashback and spillover and whatever that I'm checking out, uh, Austin Aries had the Impact Heavyweight Championship, dropped it to Johnny Impact, and immediately no-sold the move, flipped off Don Callis and left, right? So... Uh, let me go back a little further here. They were building up all week a very personal feud where they had exchanged some jabs on social media. They had even done a thing on TMZ. But it all appeared, you know, like they're really turning up the work just to make it more personal. And then this dude hit Starship Pain, right? And it's not even a second. Aries gets right up, walks out of the ring, flips off the fans. I guess looked over at Callus and flipped them off. Now, Petey Williams, who is not only a wrestler, but is a producer at Impact, said that was it for Aries. Bound for Glory was his last contracted date. He's done. But this is where the skepticism comes in for me because Impact has a bad history of doing three things. One is too many factions. The second is, oh, hey, you're a former WWE star? Have our world title. And the third is making things appear like a work, like, like, oh, it's such a shoot and it's so serious. And then you find out that now it was just a really bad attempt. I getting some publicity. And I realize that what I'm saying right now sounds like a harsh critique. I watched Bound for Glory. I covered it for Russell Zone. You can see that live coverage up on the website now. And I love the show. But this ending to me did more harm than good. And I'm gonna go with it's probably a work, but let's just assume it's a shoot for a second. Aries Kind of, is kind of like CM Punk level dick. And you know I love CM Punk. <laughs> but Aries and Punk kind of feel like they have those vibes. Like they've been doing this for a long time. And if they're at a stage in their lives where it's, it's not going to be about them, then fuck it. Fuck you. You know, you know, like that's what it comes across to me as. Kind of like um, Aries would be fine if they would have said that he would have retained the title. Yeah, yeah, or like, oh, so you don't need me anymore because Johnny's on Survivor, and now he's your new shiny toy? You you, you know, you were all about me when I was going around to all these promotions, kind of thing. Can they just, like, stop being a company? (laughs) But you know what, Tony, it's hard to say that because Bound for Glory was good. Slammiversary was good. They have good pieces but I don't know if they will ever overcome the stink that was put on them by all of the years of random abrupt transitions and I don't know if they'll be able to overcome stupid things like this you know 
I hope it was real because if not, it just it's one of those tropes in wrestling that I'm just over. Oh, it's a shoot, it's real. Like I don't I don't need to feel like it's real to enjoy it, you know what I mean? I'd much rather somebody come up with a creative story and sell me on that story rather than yeah, well, fuck you and your wife. Yeah, well, you know, why are you the world champion when you're so short anyway? You know, like, stuff like that. I just, I don't care for it. Anytime that somebody does something like that and it's a planned shoot kind of thing, it just reminds everybody that it's fake. Yeah. And you know what? Because it's the hot tags and I don't want to shit on TNA because they're actually doing good things. I'll tell you what you should watch. You should watch Tessa Blanchard versus Taya Valkyrie. That was a great women's wrestling match, and I'm floored by Tessa Blanchard every time I see her. You should watch OVE versus Pentagon Jr., Phoenix, and Brian Cage. And you should watch this thing called the Concrete Jungle Deathmatch, which was... <laughs> it sounds overly complicated. Um, It's a lot less complicated but it is dangerous as fuck. So it's just the boards of the ring. They took off all the padding and it's just the boards, which are moving like crazy. And they took off all the padding off the turnbuckles. And so why are they calling it the concrete jungle if it's wood? Because they were in Queens, New York, and it was two teams from New York. Hmm. Um, That's uh, That sounds like a typical impact type thing. It's like... We're in New York. It's the concrete jungle thing on woods. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a very violent match. It was very good. Like, overall, it was a good show. James Ellsworth was there. He, you know, got his ass kicked by Eli Drake. And, by the way, the, the New York crowd was not pleased that James Ellsworth was there surprised. Thinking that it was Jericho, yeah. right? Yeah, they were hoping for Jericho. They got James Ellsworth. And the whole deal was Eli Drake does these open challenges, but you can only respond if you're from the area. So when Ellsworth comes out, Matt, Josh Matthews is on commentary like, he's from Maryland. He can't answer this. And he said, well, I used to date this girl from Staten Island, and I lived in her basement for a while. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the crowd chanted, fuck you, Ellsworth. And promptly uh eli drake defeated him but it was a good show i enjoy impact i just want them to move forward without these kind of silly tropes unless it was real then you know maybe austin aries is a bit of a source board um let's see we got two more things to talk about here so before we get into a big 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 rant let's go with table for three it was Nitro Legends with DDP, Big Show, and Kevin Ash. Not a bad uh, episode. Nothing really stood out to me all that much, but yeah, I enjoyed it. How many times, like, I go back to when Eric Bischoff was on Table for Three, and he goes, how many times are we going to tell this story? You know, it, it's stuff like that whenever I hear WCW guys, because you know, you're, you're going to hear about the NWO, and you're going to hear about... Hey, Kevin Nash was the booker for a brief period of time. And you'll hear about, you know, when the Giant was doing the whole, I'm Andre the Giant's son and I fell off of Cobo Hall. And yeah, like these stories are, they're good. And I'd rather watch them than watch Raw. But they're, easily that was better than Raw. <laughs> they're also exhausting. And Oh, God, let me just say real quick. I'm so glad I get to do this because it's like, it's almost like therapy for me just to be able to go, <laughs> fuck, this sucks. <laughs> you know? But yeah, At the end of yeah. every episode, just kind of be like, all right, like, here's the breakdown of things that are under my skin. And then go like, okay, now I'll watch, yeah. you know, fucking South Park or something like that. <laughs> like, you know? Um, but yeah, I would give it a thumbs up because why not? I'd say see it if you guys are interested in checking it out. Uh, now let's talk about the big one, as a lot of people would say in the South. Uh, Crown Jewel. Kind of a shitty situation, huh? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> In other news, the sky is blue. Like, this is the worst situation that WWE has found themselves in quite some time. I remember when uh, a couple months ago they said, we're going to get rid of a lot of pay-per-views. And it was kind of like, oh, okay, well, we'll see what happens. You got rid of Battleground. You got rid of No Mercy for some reason, even though that's one of your better names. You got rid of Clash of Champions, so on and so forth. But then they go, hey, we're going to do these shows for Saudi Arabia. And everybody goes, uh... And then they announce the greatest Royal Rumble, and everybody goes, uh... And there's all the controversy that happens there. And WWE didn't learn anything from that, I guess. Because they're in a situation that, I'll admit, to a certain extent, it's lose-lose. They can't figure out a good way around it. But, uh, like, let's do devil's advocate here. All right. Um, I'm Vince McMahon. Somebody says to me, I'm going to give you $50 million to do a pay-per-view in Saudi Arabia. I'm going to go, oh, shit. Yeah. And to their credit, I would have done, I mean, I wouldn't have done the Greatest Royal Rumble itself, but I would have tried to do an event there because I would go, well, you know, we're going to get something good out of this and stuff. I don't know if I would have signed a five or a 10 year deal or whatever the case may be, but depending on the money, deal. 10 event deal. Okay. So that's, you know, you do two a year, it's five years. You do one a year after this, you're going to drag it out to nine, but they had to know just based off of what Saudi Arabia is. It's not exactly Canada where you've got like, no real issues that go on. It's like, this is a controversial kind of area. And we're not in good times in 2018 where it's kind of like everything you do and everything you say is going to upset people and stuff. And everybody is very opinionated, but also everybody's also frustrated with the idea that certain antiquated points of view are still kind of hanging around. It's the old guard refusing to change and it's the new guard taking a more radicalized approach because they're annoyed at the lack of progress kind of so it's not good for anybody and i think that on both sides you get people that put their fingers in their ears and they go i'm not listening i want to stay things the way exactly that they are when it comes to a lot of things i mean we're seeing that when it comes to roman reigns we're seeing that when it comes to a lot of things that vince does in wwe and we're seeing that when it comes to politics and different things too but then we're also getting the people that are like well you're not listening so we're gonna like torch the fucking place and force you to listen so i think that there's a necessary need for tact when it comes to talking about crown jewel where you have to entertain both sides of the argument and when we play devil's advocate here let me reiterate to everybody too all of us back with greatest royal rumble we're all saying it's kind of shitty to go to an area where they don't allow women to do this kind of stuff so we're all against the Saudi Arabian side of things. However, I'll make some arguments here that are going to be pro crown jewel. If you make the agreement and you've got, you know, this plan of doing these pay-per-views and stuff like that, WWE's in a bad position. They can't just kind of drop off. Agreed? Yeah, I'm actually... I found this video of Jericho talking about how shitty his experience in Saudi Arabia was. So I was trying to like listen to that as I'm thinking about just how fucking dumb this is for them. And I will say, like they, the ink was dry. They signed this contract. They might be able to salvage this, and this is the only pass I'll give them. Is if they say we're going to do the greatest Royal Rumble, I'm not the we're going to do Crown Jewel, but after this we're done. If they continue to just say we're going to work with them and we are the hope, because that that's my mindset that they're going to just be like we are the change in the world, you know we're, we're WWE, we change lives, damn it, like. We are the world. <laughs> that, but you know that's how, the way they see themselves. And that's scary to me because you're not 
changing Saudi Arabia. You know? Yeah, you're not coming cut, in cut and doing losses here, guys. You're not doing wrestling matches and changing how politics work in another country. This isn't Rocky. You know, you're not like you you beat Drago and suddenly the fucking Cold War is over. <laughs> you know. And for those who don't know too much about the situation, of course, we don't know everything that's going on too. Because even if we followed every little bit of news that comes along with this, it's still not every bit of information that's out there. But so we're going into this with like a limited amount of knowledge for certain things. But one thing that I do want to criticize, um, but I can also understand where WWE is coming from. Their first statement of it was to say, we're monitoring the situation. And that was it. So that's them essentially saying, you want a comment? We can't give you one right now. Since then, there's been more reports about people in WWE themselves, you know, the performers and such that say, we don't want to go to Saudi Arabia for some reason or another. Maybe it's on the political side of things. They're like, I don't want to support this country. Maybe it's out of fear that they would be, you know, like shot or kidnapped or, you know, whatever the case may be. For one reason or another, they find this whole negative political climate as being a bad thing. WWE's response to that and all the reports about like how the, the talent themselves don't want to go. This is the quote. As always, we maintain an open line of communication with our performers as we continue to monitor the situation. Which is another thing that translates to, yeah, we heard you. <laughs> and just, we don't want to say anything that would seem like we're going against Saudi Arabia, but we can't say anything that says we are militant in our uh, pride for the Saudi Arabian government and we are just in so so much in love with them because they know that they can't because if you do that, you're insane. So their only thing is to do is to basically say, I would like to invoke my Fifth Amendment right and not answer that question, which is what they're trying to do. Now, with the situation that's going on here, I've been only following it tangentially. And I've got a report up here. This is uh, – which website is this? The Wall Street Journal says this. This is from earlier today. So I only read the first sentence of this at first, and I figured I would read the rest of it on the air. So shout out to the World Street uh, – or the World Street, the Wall Street Journal. Um, I'm stealing your work. Saudi Arabia, under mounting pressure, weighed a new public response – to, con to confront accusations its agents killed a dissident Saudi Arabian journalist as President Trump dispatched his top diplomat oh, – yeah, I'm sure that that guy's great – to the kingdom and investigators searched the presumed crime scene in Istanbul. Is it Istanbul or Istanbul? It's Istanbul, isn't it? I don't know. I think Fuck it. I, I would say Istanbul. But... I'm an ignorant American. It's Istanbul. Uh, <laughs> I say Iraq, too, instead of Iraq or whatever. Uh, for clues, on Monday, Saudi officials were considering whether to say rogue operatives killed Jamal Khashoggi. Khashoggi, I'm not too sure. During an interrogation gone wrong, people familiar with the matter said a move that could help the royal family distance itself from responsibility. The case has strained U.S.-Saudi ties and cast a shadow over Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman Salman uh, efforts uh, to overhaul the kingdom's economy and attract foreign investment since... The journalist's uh, appear disappearance, powerful U.S. executives have withdrawn from a high-profile investment conference in Riyadh this month. Remember, Riyadh is where they're doing this. The government's tentative explanation co uh, comports with comments from Mr. Trump made Monday. It sounded to me like maybe these could have been rogue killers. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm reading right now. I'm reading a CNN article on Trump's comments. And he says, with that being said, the king firmly denied any knowledge of it. He didn't re really know. Maybe. I don't want to get into his mind. But it sounded like, to me, like maybe these could have been rogue killers. Who knows? We're going to get to the bottom of it very soon. But, but his was a flat denial. Now, let's not pretend like the tension between... Trump and the Saudi Arabians doesn't factor into this as well. WWE is very good with Trump. Like, he's in their Hall of Fame. Vince's wife works for Trump. Uh, I'm sure that Donnie Bill the Wahlberg is weighing in on this situation as well. 
But it, for me, and if Callum was here, he would say, yeah, but you're not, you're forgetting the money. And money cannot talk that loudly. For a company who has relationships with Susan G. Komen and started a child's cancer charity called Connor's Cure, and they work with the Special Olympics and Make-A-Wish, and by the way, they turned their whole company model upside down just to get a sponsorship and a partnership with the National Guard. You cannot tell me that they're like, all right, we're going to sacrifice all of that because this Saudi Arabian money, though. Like, no. And it's an argument that I can understand. There's the two philosophies. Do you go with morality or do you go with business? And so many different people have said over the years in various different formations of quotes and stuff that you can't be a good person and also be a good businessman. So do you go with, well, we have a a, uh, responsibility to our investors and our shareholders. We're under the assumption that the Saudi Arabian deal was going to be some like massive influx of money. So unless the government tells us that we can't, we're going to continue it. And then you get everybody else who is on like the philosophical side of things and the morality clause kind of things that go like, yeah, but look at the shit that's happening. Like, do you really want to go there? And I'm but kind of I'm in agreement even, with you. Looking, like, I'm not even looking at it from a morality standpoint at this point. I'm saying as a business, this is not a good look for them. Everything that they do becomes smoke and mirrors. Partnerships with ESPN out the window. HBO's uh, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver was roasting them. Over I didn't this. check that out yet. Was that good? Uh, very funny. But it's it's sad as a wrestling fan because you shouldn't have to be subjected to this. They're always talking about the Americana and they always say Vince's perfect baby face is if you could put John Cena in red, white, and blue trunks and have him carry the American flag, that would be Vince's perfect baby face. This doesn't feel very Americana to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, look at this main event, dude. Look at DX versus the Brothers of Destruction. You've got one dude in Shawn Michaels who was from a military family who said that he felt such great pride when his son had said he wanted to enlist in the military following an attack. You've got Kane, who is a fucking mayor. You cannot tell me that they're going to be like, <laughs> oh, they, this guy makes fucking great political decisions because he's going over to Saudi Arabia. Unless this whole thing is a plot for Glenn Jacobs to smooth things over with the Saudis, then Glenn Jacobs for president in 2020. I don't see this being a good move. You've got John Cena on this card who gushes over, you know, working with the troops is the second greatest thing I do. Aside from working with Make-A-Wish kids, this can't feel very good for him. Um, Kurt Angle, American Olympian. I'm sure he doesn't want to do this. Uh, Randy Orton, Marine. Come on. Like, nobody wants to do this, I'm sure, on this card. What are we doing here? And why are we doing it? It's all about the money. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it boils like, down God, to. God if this it, was a like, show that didn't earn them that much money, this wouldn't be a discussion. You know, my, my uh, Bill Pritchard of Russell Zone said the greatest thing to me in relation to this. He's like, the fucking Moolah Battle Royal was changed instantly. Now, yes, you're talking about a very minute thing compared to what we're talking about here. But still, you want to sit there and suggest that you care about women in sports and blah, blah, blah. When, you, first of all, you're like, oh, girls, don't worry. You're not going to be on this show because you can't be because, you know, they don't respect you. But it's okay because you've got evolution. I, everything about this is wrong. And if they don't pull out of this, it's going to just expose them as hypocrites. And they're going to have a long way to go to rebuild. Yeah. And it's not going to work as one of those things, too, where, like, they do this show and then 
the next time around that they're supposed to do it that they just kind of go, well, I hope that people don't fucking remember about that journalist because people are going to bring it up. This is going to continue for however long that they continue this agreement. And they're, I mean, let's, let's face the facts. It's not going to get better. It's not like the relation is going to change. And suddenly, by the time 2019 comes around, Saudi Arabia is going to be like, no, you should have the women on the card and you should do this. And, you know, it's not going to just turn on a dime like that. So if anything, the next time that they're going to do some kind of an event, there'll probably be another scandal on top of that. Yep. So you, you're not coming out of this looking good. You're only coming out of it with money. And then you have to weigh how much is that money worth? Is that money worth the pure money behind it? Are you backing out of a deal that's really going to screw you over in the future? You know, is there some kind of way that you can kind of say, all right, well, we did your greatest Royal Rumble and we did your crown jewel, but you know what? We're going to hold off on the rest of the shows and renegotiate for some other kind of a deal. Or is this going to be one of those kind of things where WWE tries to, you know, ignore what's going on and tell fans what they want them to think. Because look at how many times that on smaller scales that we've had like Roman Reigns. I just bring the guy up because it's a good example, but they had Jonathan Coachman on the one time say Roman Reigns is like the most beloved person in sports entertainment. And it was like, all right, you're lying right now (laughs) because that's not true. And Roman Reigns is popular and he's got detractors. And you can't just say that the detractors don't exist and then have everybody go, yeah, that's what it is. You know, that's the same. If you go by that mentality, then the people that say the Holocaust never happened, if they had a loud enough voice, then everybody would go, yep, didn't happen. Just because you say something doesn't make it true. So the more and more that WWE says, like, hey, remember how great Saudi Arabia is? And everybody goes, no, people aren't going to go, eh, I trust WWE they're going to just be more and more against it. And one suggestion that people have been putting out there a lot recently when it comes to this is, well, why don't they do crown jewel, but they do it in another area. And I could see a couple problems with that. Number one being when's the time going to happen for you to book that venue and sell the tickets. Number two, you don't get the money from the Saudi Arabia thing. Well, I the, when I pitch this, I assume that they're taking the financial hit in effort to save face. Do the show on this upcoming tour in the UK, and yeah, you can say, "Well, that's like in two weeks, and you don't have enough time." Turn one of the shows into Crown Jewel. I'm sure everybody will understand. Uh, you know. The UK crowd or will be very appreciative of the matches they get. I think, you know, it's worth it. I And people have said, well, if this doesn't happen, then Shawn Michaels won't come back. You're going to tell me that Shawn Michaels is going to be 2018 Shawn Michaels, not the Shawn Michaels that we all heard about from the 90s. It's going to be as much of a day. That Saudi money is gone. I don't care about this country. I'm going home. Really? You think Shawn Michaels really wants to go to Saudi Arabia? Uh, I don't know. I think, first of all, we have this little thing called Survivor Series. Well, that's another suggestion, too. People are saying, why not do some of these matches on the Survivor Series card? And to a certain extent, I almost kind of look at that and go, yeah. but." Then I look at that and I go, well, fuck. I don't know what to think because my go-to idea is if I put myself in WWE's shoes, I go, well, no, I have already have my plans for Survivor Series. And Do they? Something, well, that's the thing. Here, I'm going to I'm gonna get to it because say I'm Vince McMahon in the sense that Tony Mango is in control of the company. You guarantee there's plans. And that if the plans change, I'm going to look at that and go, shit, how do I, you know, skip to this? And I had these plans and I did all this kind of stuff. But then I look at the way that WWE did Super Showdown and Hell in a Cell. And I go, I don't think that they have plans. And there's a good chance 
Super Showdown being half of what Hell in a Cell used to be, and then Crown Jewel picking up the slack and all that kind of stuff, Crown Jewel might just be like, we might copy and paste some of the same matches for Survivor Series anyway. And if WWE has any plans to do things like that, like if they're just going to do Braun Strowman against Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship, then fuck you, don't do Crown Jewel, just do Survivor Series. Because at this point, you're not trying, you're just taking the paycheck. And for being that lazy behind it, you've got no sympathy for me anymore. But if this was some big deal, lots of plans went into it and a whole thing like that, I can kind of understand from the company's perspective of, let's just try to get through Crown Jewel and then we'll try to figure it out next year. Well, I just... the wor- Well, the worst case scenario, the thing that I'm thinking is, we can assume that they're going through with this because they've been continuing to promote it. If Crown Jewel sucks, oh man... <laughs> I don't think as a wrestling show Crown Jewel can suck even though I think you have to factor in the audience and the UK or Los Angeles crowd would be a lot better for some of these things especially D-Generation X because is what, what, what is you know is DX going to be like and this is for Undertaker and Kane, and by the way, all those assholes in Turkey, we've got two words. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna we've do? got two words for you, but we can't really say because it might be offensive to the royal family. <laughs> Let's get ready to have this match. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, don't do the show, please. Just, just do it anywhere else. Do it at Survivor Series. How? All right. Now, How epic of a Survivor Series would it be if it's Lesnar, Strowman, Reigns, Brian, AJ, DX, Brothers of Destruction, and then you throw in, like, Asuka versus Becky and Four Horsewomen versus Four Horsewomen? That's a good card. Well, you can't do Asuka, Becky, and then have Four Horsewomen, Four Horsewomen. So, you know, I mean, if they have some ideas for Survivor Series that are going to be actually good and they depend on Crown Jewel going down, then I would lean a little bit more towards let's just kind of bite the bullet, take the hit, get the money, and then hope that everybody forgives us. But if we look back on this at the, you know, November 3rd or November 5th or whatever the case may be, because it's Friday and I'm not doing the math right now, if the Monday Night Raw after Crown Jewel, we look back and we go, Crown Jewel sucked. And the buildup to Survivor Series is now going to be what well, we saw, what you two did at Crown Jewel and at Survivor Series. You're going to face off again or something like that. I'm going to be livid. So what What do you what do you do here? What is the best course of action? If they would have had more time, I think canceling the event and pushing it back could have been a good thing or changing it to a different venue and hoping that you can get some kind of better deal with the Saudi Arabian thing or something like that. I honestly think as bad as it is for them to be in bed with the Saudi Arabian government and stuff right now, I think the best call is for them to just do crown jewel and the damage is already done to a certain extent. Nobody's going to forgive WWE more so than they are going to convict them. Now, if obviously if another like really, really bad thing happens, like, you know, it's terrible that like an investigative journalist was killed in whatever fashion he was. But if we get something where it's like nuclear bombs are going off in Saudi Arabia, it's like, yeah, they're not doing crown jewel. You know what I mean? Like there's there's certain levels of things. Uh, an interrogation gone wrong that's a whatever and it's a big snafu and all that horrible and it's something that's out of WWE's control so it's not like it's like directly affected them in that kind of regard and stuff they can't take responsibility for that they can be guilty by association but they already are and I got a feeling that pulling out of this deal loses them a lot of money makes an enemy out of the Saudi Arabia situation 
and nobody's going to forgive them anyway. Like you mentioned John Oliver. He did a whole thing that I didn't get a chance to check out. I mentioned, but like, I'm assuming he was critical of WWE and probably said like, you know, isn't it ridiculous? WWE is still going to go there. Right. Well, is that kind of like the gist of what he was doing? Yeah. It's, you know, and more like, you know, bashing the, the, the big pro wrestlers and, you know, just don't go over to Saudi Arabia and, I don't know why. Could you really honestly, though, see if like WWE put out a statement tomorrow and they said, listen, we've quote unquote monitored the situation and we've come to the conclusion that we think it would be best if we uh, next crown jewel. Do you really think that you'd see something on John Oliver the next week going congrats WWE for doing the right thing or that they just wouldn't mention anything? You know, I think they would at least say something to the effect of like. Well, common sense kicked in, and you know. And I but think I, that I, nobody would really it, like. It wouldn't do anything good for WWE. It would just be not more bad things, kind of. I don't know. I. It's it, they're already there, but I, if they do Crown Jewel, I can accept it. Do not do another Saudi Arabian show after. That's I case. think that the best option is to just go. Look, we have a commitment. We already have the plans. We already booked the arena. We already this. We already that. After that, we can address the situation further and kind of deal with it that way. But look I mean, at it. Look that, at it in this regard too. Um, you ever like have some kind of an issue going on and you try to Google treatment for it, and, yeah, and it's like you're dying. <laughs> Well, it's like, you know, like, ow, my fucking head hurts. I've got a major headache. What's the treatment for a headache? And then nine times out of ten on the internet, for some reason, people consider treatment being prevention. And it's like, well, if you want to, like, you know, for instance, you want to lose weight. And then people go, to lose weight, make sure that you don't eat bad and gain weight. And then it's like, yeah, tell that to somebody who's 400 pounds. They need to lose it. They don't need to not have gained weight. That's the issue is they already did. Or if you've got like, you know, cancer and you want to try to deal with cancer, it's not like don't smoke. You might get cancer. It's like, yeah, well, it happened. And then now what? Like, so the best cure is always prevention. And in WWE's regard, if they would have seen the situation and been like, yeah, I don't think Saudi Arabia is really the best thing to get in bed with from the start. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Well, Clearly they didn't. Yep. So part um, of this is on them for just saying, let's risk it. I, I, I don't want to be... I don't want to let them off the hook. I think I have a, a tendency of letting them slide on a lot of things. And this was a very bad judgment call. And I think it's going to do a lot of damage to their other relationships. Unless... I mean, and then, you know... you get lost in this rabbit hole, but unless Susan G. Komen and all those other things are all just money grabs too, and they're like, yeah, we totally get why you're doing it, buddy. WWE itself turns heel? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, we have like an animated WWE logo come out one day, cut a promo, and it's just kind of like, I bled you of all the money! Like, you know, that kind of thing. Terrible. Yeah. It's a weird situation. It's a lot of, uh, like, tricky grounds. You're walking on eggshells no matter what you are in. But if you wouldn't have gotten in this situation to begin with, you wouldn't be having the issues. But you wouldn't also have all that, you know, tens of millions of dollars. So if WWE at the end of the day says, we'll take a hit to get a lot of money to fund a lot of things going forward, they're going to bounce back at some point. And then, you know, WWE's been involved in a lot of bad things. It's not going to kill the company. It's just certainly not going to help, you know? I guess there's nothing we can do, you know? And it'll be an interesting couple of weeks moving forward with this and evolution and a lot of things. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm very defeated right now as a fan and as somebody who just doesn't want this bad publicity on this company and it's like 
they do it to themselves and you just have to like shake your head and let them take the heat you know yeah i mean i wish i could be defending wwe but then you got a company that does this and then when you go like you could at least in some regards maybe make some arguments and go like well the the product is good but then it's like they just they're setting up sasha banks and bailey and natalia against the riot squad for evolution and then i go fuck you i don't even want to defend that like you know? yeah so then you go more so with like, all right, let me try to defend WWE to somebody who's critical and go, well, it used to be fun. <laughs> that kind of yeah, thing. And, and I hate that argument too, because it's like, you don't want to dwell on the past. You know, you don't want to say, oh, it was good at one point. Well, if you dwell on the past, then you fit perfectly in with the most recent pay-per-views. That's very true. Kurt Angle, John Cena, Undertaker, Kane, Shawn Michaels, Triple H. Rey Mysterio. All in Saudi Arabia. All in Saudi Arabia for dignitaries that will be on their phone the entire time. <laughs> yeah, God, if they had that whole thing again. I don't know. Crown Jewel is a mess. And who knows what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks leading up to Crown Jewel. But if anything does happen, that'll be another hot tag in the future. Push comes to shove. Maybe some kind of special if they like cancel Crown Jewel. Maybe we'll talk like, you know, what could have happened on the event or something like that. But stay tuned. Well, God knows what will be the next thing. Let me end on this. Callum asked me this question. I'm going to ask you. Outside of the product absolutely sucking, what would it take for you to seriously consider boycotting WWE? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. See, there's a lot of things that like I can think of, but it's irrational. Like, obviously, you know, they're not going to like have some kind of a thing where they purposely like kill people in the crowd, <laughs> you know, like it's like certain like extremes and stuff like that. If they take a lot of bad political stance things for like, certain things you know if they start doing some stuff that is really really shady then that's going to be one thing but i can't see wwe outright like endorsing certain things and i think it like kind of comes down to i'm usually willing to separate art from artist in a lot of regards so if wwe was really just really bad i'd stop watching just because it's like any other tv show Outside of, like, I make my, like, money off of it. But I don't know. What about you? Um, Are they, like, approaching that? The closest, this is the closest I've ever considered. Because it just seems like they, they don't care. You know what I mean? Like, they do not care about their own image. They make this illusion that they do but then they do things like this so that's the closest that i've come but i would honestly say if they if they would ever do anything like if if crown jewel comes around and they're like thank you saudi arabia (laughs) this is great great and you've been great that would make me have to come on here and be like well i make my money doing this so i don't know if i can stop but i also don't know if my heart would be in it you know they were just like Saudi Arabia is great. You know? <laughs> if they have another one of those stupid promos like they did the last time where it was like, welcome to Saudi Arabia, the best thing in the fucking world, <laughs> then it's going to be like, oh, shit, this is not good. Oh, my God. I really hope that they get a handle on this before it's too late. And it might already be past that. I don't know. <laughs> We'll see, though. This is going to be a story that I'm sure is not just going to end tomorrow. And if you guys have any questions in particular that you guys want us to address when it comes to this, that isn't just like, what are your thoughts on Crown Jewel? Because we kind of already broke down that stuff. But like any specifics or something like that, think about sending them in for the mailbag because that is happening on Wednesday. And if you want to be aware of when we post that, make sure that you subscribe on the YouTube channel and ring the bell for notifications. Also follow the Facebook and Twitter accounts for smart out moment. They are at smart out moment and follow all the other things that are happening on the website portion of these, uh, kind of wrestling chats that we got going on. A lot of weekly stuff. 
We also have fanboysanonymous.com for the movie reviews and different things like that. I think later on this week, Daredevil comes out, so I'll probably be doing something about that. I'll probably actually do what I, I've been doing in the past couple of times where I'll try to binge watch as much as I can and I'll give like live running commentary of what I am thinking. So even if it comes down to like, oh man, that Chinese food looks good, then I'll end up doing that. Um, who knows what else has happened when it comes to that stuff. Uh, How good does that Chinese food look to me? Almost every single Netflix series so far that they've done for this Marvel stuff has made me want Chinese food. I don't remember a single one of them that hasn't like iron fist. They eat in a Chinese place and I'm just like, yo, those dumplings look awesome. And like Luke cage goes to a Chinese place and I'm like, egg rolls would be fucking great right now. Like it's just something about Chinese food with these shows. So Friday I'm probably going to be like exhausted in the middle of the day and just being like, I need sleep and wonton soup. <laughs> it's just, We'll see. Uh, that's happening over on the fanboy stuff. Follow all that stuff over there. We have all the same stuff going on per usual. If you want to show your support on the monetary side of things, there's the Patreon for both of those. Just, uh, you know, donate what you can, what you want to, what you get a spare change you got going on. There's also the Redbubble and the Tee Public merchandise shops if you want to check out those kind of designs. And at some point, I'm going to add more. I just haven't had the time. Check out all my other content that I got going on. Bleacher Report, E-Wrestling News, so on and so forth. Check out what Rob's got going on as well. Uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dude Felice. Um, you can check out WrestleZone.com for your daily wrestling news. This week alone, I know I will be doing the WrestleZone Daily tomorrow, which is over on the Facebook, WrestleZone, uh, Facebook.com slash WrestleZone.com. I will be covering NWA 70 this Sunday. Featuring the 2 out of 3 falls rematch from All In, where Cody Rhodes will defend the NWA championship against Nick Aldis. In addition to that, I'll be, you know, doing all my stuff for Smartout Moments, so I'll be on the mailbag. I'll be doing the Triple Threat, which will likely be on SmackDown 1000. And, let's see, is that it? And you can support me by getting a t-shirt at timekillerapparel.com. It would mean the world to me. And... Callum and I may start that universe mode this weekend. So stay tuned for that. Lots of things to pay attention to. And who knows? Maybe even we'll do Crown Jewel. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We'll Uh, we'll host Crown Jewel somewhere in the Northeast. (laughs) Yeah, it'll be, I don't know, the fucking... Hoboken, <laughs> sure. In the middle of Times Square, we're gonna have Triple yeah. H, and Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker again, <laughs> and we'll offer them pizza, one pizza to share. I'm not made of money. <laughs> it's just be like, yeah, we can cut it in a lot of slices. That's how it works, right? Yeah. And now I want some pizza. So thank you for listening to this, everybody. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and make sure you pass this around. If you got anybody who you think would be interested in checking out Smack Talk and following all our ridiculous shenanigans going forward and stuff. Thank you for all the support per usual. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time on Wednesday in that mailbag. Adios, everybody. This has been another Smart Out Moment, and we're being counted out. 